All right, so let's continue with this. It'll be the part two on Rastafari and African Zion and Zionism. Let's clear the ear on this subject matter. You know what I'm saying? Let's know what I and I stand for. You know what I'm saying? And who I and I are. And not be, be confused. You know what I'm saying? By all this kind of talk out there. And we use this particular, um, this particular comment that was to uh, Islamo-fascist terrorism in Africa. Black Israel versus Amalek, the Amalek Wars, Rastafari, 21st century lecture. We have to recognize what time we are living in and don't be um, confused. Like, we can look historically, look at certain historical events, but that's historical. It's not actionable. We have to recognize, well, what is actionable? What's going on now? So we have to know I and I past, I and I history. This is why the first part of this we had to go to Genesis 15. First of all, to point out what land has been given to us according to Jah. Because as many, um, I think the sincere black Hebrew brothers and sisters, you know, because there's a lot, of, a lot of growth for us. A lot has been suppressed over many, many years. So there's a lot of catch-up work to do. You know what I'm saying? But some, some of the basics will help us out immensely if we recognize that what we see on the map as Israel today is not based upon what the Word of God is in full, it's based on what man says. Because of what God says, as we did in the first part, it shows us between the river of the Euphrates up here, right, and the river of Egypt, which goes all the way down, encompasses Ethiopia. In fact, it kind of circles a little bit within Ethiopia and goes all the way down to Lake Victoria in the south, is according to... Genesis chapter 15, verse 18, what Yahweh, what Jah, what Yah has given to us. And I say this pointedly, especially to some of the Hebrew Israelites, because I not overstand your zeal. You know what I'm saying? As Hawaii Apollos, Paul says, you'll have a zeal for God. You know what I'm saying? But it's not always according to knowledge. This is why you keep missing Ethiopia, you keep missing the African Zion and the importance of Ketamawi Haile Selassie, the importance of his imperial majesty in this equation. You see, because Satan the devil has lied and spread a lot of slander and lies against his majesty, but with the technology and information and the ability to, to learn that we have now, unlike almost any other time in modern European um, history or under the reign of the Gentile, there's no excuse. There's no excuse for such ignorance. You understand? Remember what it says, God, he winks, you know, at the times of ignorance. But now he's calling for all of I and I to repent, to have a change of mind, and to be born again according to the knowledge of the Bain Ha Elohim, the knowledge of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua Ha Moshiach. So this is very important for us as the Seed. Now, of course, some can interpret this in Christ, spiritually speaking. But just remember that there's a church, right? There's a true church, and there's an end time. It's Israel in prophecy. This is why I love the Schofield um, Reference Bible. It actually breaks down the difference between the so-called church, right, and Israel. That Israel, which was broken off, speaking about us as the lost sheep, as black people who went into captivity and slavery in the Americas and throughout the earth, but the majority, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, you know what I'm saying, in the West. You know what I'm saying? We're speaking about those three, the so-called Negro, Afro-American. We're speaking about the so-called Jamaican or West Indian, the Benjamite. And we're speaking about the so-called Levite, the Haitian. This is right and exact. And we can also speak about Isachar, Issachar, speaking about Mexico and the Mexicans. And that's why I say to a lot of folks, don't get caught up in, in white man squabbles and the European squabbles. He wants us to think that the Mexicans are taking our jobs, the Hispanics are taking our... That's only for the lost sheep. Only the lost sheep think that. Only the lost sheep find them to be a threat. They're not a threat to I and I. We're in a land that's not our own, and if those who the land belongs to, we see what happened to them, and we see what happened to us being brought over here. So how dare we be forgetful now? But Manasseh is forgetful. You know what I'm saying? Manasseh is that, is, that, um, is, that, is that portion for the forgetful black folks. They are Manasseh. 
You understand? Know or Menace. But anyway, showing this right here is very important because when we look at John's word, at God's word, it is from the Euphrates, right, over here, which also encompasses Syria and Baghdad, part of Iraq, Jordan, Saudi Arabia. This is why in ancient times you'll find black peoples and ancient black artifacts all up along here. And they'll say, well, that's because they were burning a candle, and that's why it has a dark complexion. Well, what about the peasy, the peasy naps, you know what I'm saying, and the curls and everything? Oh, well, that was a, that was a wig. You know, they, 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 who we can bamboozle you, you know what I'm saying? That's why the first thing you need to know Jop, because if you reject Jop, then these people, the Gentiles, can hoodwink and bamboozle you for eternity. And you don't want that, you know what I'm saying, because where they'll hoodwink and bamboozle you, you know what I'm saying? We'll be in the lake of fire. You know what I'm saying? In Sheol. You know what I'm saying? In some, in some, in some state. You know what I'm saying? In some state that you don't want to be in forever. You know what I'm saying? Let's let's just understand that this is a re this is a real talk. Some folks don't think so, but you know, find the truth. Know the truth for yourself. So it's between these two rivers right here. These two rivers. So it encompasses this. So everything over here, all down here. All along here, and it's so interesting, and all in this area, you know what I'm saying, all in this area of um, what's known as East Africa, including Ethiopia, will you find Hebraic peoples? Will you find remnants of people who either overtly say, yes, we are Israelites, or we're from one of the tribes of Israel, or their customs, you know what I'm saying, their customs, their tradition, their language, other things will betray a very strong ancient Judaism. So we want to distinguish um, the ancient Zion, original Zion, from the modern Zionism, the modern European converted Khazar, the Khazarian Edomite thing. Let's, let's understand that distinction there. A lot of these folks don't, like Samuel, or, or not Samuel, Samson, Samson, and it's interesting, I know I was going to touch on Samson, the whole Bob Marley connection. Yeah, we're not saying Rita, the music industry is Delilah, but we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more, John Willing. But let's finish with Samson 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. And Samson said this, Samson 1, 2, 3, 2, 1 said that Islamists are not targeting anyone. Hmm. So he's saying that we shouldn't believe, as they say, our so-called lying eyes. We should believe him, this, this individual. Because they say that they're not talking. We're showing them video footage, evidence, where even they're talking about what they're doing, and they want us to believe that that person that we see in the video, that one with the henna face and everything, is really a Zionist agent. Well, he's not an uh, African Zionist agent. But anyway, here's what um, Samson 1, 2, 3, 2, 1 says. Islamists are not targeting anyone. It is Zionists in, in, in caps, all caps. It is Zionists who are behind the destruction, carnage, war-making happening in Africa, Middle East, America. The real Arabs, get that, the real Arabs. So that means there are fake Arabs out there. That's what they're saying. He's saying that there are fake Arabs. But the real Arabs, notice what Samson 1, 2, 3, 2, 1 says. The real Arabs are too busy. Oh, they're too busy. They got a job or they got some other preoccupation. They're too busy being blown to bits in Syria, Iraq, Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, Yemen, etc. by, once again, full caps, Zionists, right, controlled America. Now, a lot of you will probably believe a lot of that, too. Now, that's, see, 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 this is where you have to recognize the big picture, right? You have the militias in America. You remember Timothy McVeigh? You remember McVeigh? Not McVeigh, not McVeigh, but McVeigh. You understand? Timothy McVeigh and the Oklahoma bombings and everything, and he was a part of a militia group. You remember some of these other militia things that were happening back in Clinton's time, there was the Waco thing, so forth and so on. There are militia groups in America who, that's part of their doctrine. You understand? That's a part of their, like when we talk about sovereignty, there's also the European Americans who also are speaking about sovereignty issues, so forth and so on. And these issues get confused 
if you don't pay attention to the details. You remember the old saying, the so-called devil is in the details? So you got to pay attention to the details. But this individual says what they say. Now, there's a respondent, was that Kose 20? Kose 20 said, Arabs have been targeting and killing and enslaving the Hebrew, the Hebrews, or slash Negroes, for the last 3,000 years. And in a sense, isn't that not true? Don't we have when, when the, the sons of Israel, of Jacob, sold their brother Joseph because of jealousy, didn't they, um, didn't they sell Joseph to some, I think it was some Ishmaelites? Isn't Ishmael the progenitor of the Harab, the Arab race? Now, originally we have to put this in. You have to make note of this. The original Arabs were black people. This is why, well, l l listen to I and I comment. I and I comment, here's I and I comment to um, Samson 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. We said, Amen. First of all, to Kosei's, we agree with what Kosei said. You understand? In, in basic principle. Um, Samson 1, 2, 3, 2, 1 is another Islamist or Mohammedan apologist. He's an apologist. Notice how often... Even when we speak about the Arab um, uh, Mohammedan slave trade, you understand that many times we say the Mohammedan because we, you know, recognize that perhaps there's something that is positive of the so-called real Mohammed and the real Islam and the real connection with Ethiopia so many hundreds of years ago, right? The Hijra, that's where the Mohammedans went of all places. They went to a black African nation. They went to the African Zion. You understand? They went to the African Zion, right? And that is where they were able to um, be protected under the Judeo-Christian king. Now, the Mohammedans, they, they lie, and they say that the, um, um, the Nigus or Nigush or Nagashi, as they say, they say that he converted to Islam, but yet they cannot provide any records. You understand, just a couple of hadith or a hadith, some tales and stories that say that. But there's no real proof, both in real history or even in their history of it. But that's what they say. So we went on to say that this one is an apologist, a Mohammedan apologist. So when we say about what really happened to black people and we give them evidence, you understand, out of their own mouths even. When we talk about Darfur, they say the Janjaweed and Darfur wasn't really happening. When we talk about southern Sudan and the, the northern um, Sudanese, you understand, who are really the black Arabs. The Sudanese are the black Arabs. But instead of looking at the ones who drew the, drove them out of Arabia, they now are turning on their Nubian Christian people and brothers in Africa. You know what I'm saying? This, this is what happens because you have to understand that with this, there's also this whole black-white thing. There's also this racial, outer racial thing that can make black Arabs turn against their other black peoples, whether they are Christian or Jews, because they're doing the bidding of pale red Arabs. You know what I'm saying? Like the ones that he, he basically named. Now, um, we say this right here. We say that Notice how when black Africans or Hebrews or Negroes in Africa are murdered, people have been murdered, you understand, and killed, what do they talk about? They talk about so-called Arabs from Syria, Iraq, Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, Yemen. Have you, did you just notice that? Did you pick up on that? Whenever we speak about, well, some of your people who call themselves Mohammedan have been going around, you understand, with some kind of almost like a Islamo-Nazi or some type of mentality and killing off. And here's the, here's the kicker in Mali. Here's the real kicker. The, 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 the Africans in Mali are also Islamic. They've been Islamic since Mali, Songhai, and Timbuktu when the Hebrews were sold because they didn't want to get sold. They converted you understand, to Islam, so they changed the names from Abraham to Ibrahim to get along, to go along, and that's how they have been basically living. But now you have this guy coming, and these people come from Pakistan and, and from Afghanistan, like in the video we show you. You understand? From Pakistan and Afghanistan. Don't you see what's going on? But notice, he didn't say, he said the real Arabs. 
Because even among the so-called Arabs and Mohammedans, they don't really respect the Pakistanis and the Afghanis, Afghanis as real Muslims. See, it was bin Laden who did. You know what I'm saying? Bin Laden kind of like broke from the pack. And he was more or less a so-called purist, uh, like some say Sufi or purist in a sense. So he felt that if these ones, were, even if they're not part of my race, but if they're really down with this religion, I'm going to support them. You know, that, so that's where this whole thing with the Pakistan and Afghanistan got their rise. But among the Arab people, like, look at Iran. You, you wonder why Iran is Muslim. Iran is Muslim. It's a Muslim nation. But how come some of these other Arabs don't like the Iranians almost as much as the so-called European Jews over there don't like the Iranians? Because the Iranians are not Arab. The Iranians are Persian. You know what I'm so every group of people recognize their seed and race. Mm -hmm. Except Negroes, blacks, and coloreds. They don't recognize their seed or their race. That's why the whole Hebrew reasoning is so very important. The Hebrew equals so-called Negro reasoning is so very important because the first step for us in, 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 in reclaiming our, 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 our minds, our souls, the restoration of our soul, our culture, of who we are, you understand, as a people. We're the only people that that has been stripped almost completely from. And we've been called everything except children of God, except children of Jah. Think about it. Anyway, so notice how they, they never, they have no empathy. They seem to have no compassion, no empathy. Mm -hmm. And in a sense, I think about it when I saw some pictures on the TV about, about Syria. I saw those pictures. I follow up on the news. I saw in Syria, they show a whole bunch of children and women. Women and children, which were massacred, were wrapped up and ready for, like, Islamic burial. And, you know, I, I did get sad. I was like, wow. You know, but then I, and the Spirit said, watch. And there was no, there, there seemed to be no real compassion even amongst them for themselves. So the Holy Spirit said, well, imagine what they did and, 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 and how they treated us. Not, not to hate them, but to recognize, you know, saying that they're no friend of ours. You understand? As Psalm 83, brothers and sisters, pray, chant Psalm 83. Musicians out there, work the message of Psalm 83 in your relics or lyrics. Psalm 83 is very important. It's a prayer for victory against this abomination, you understand, that we are experiencing. And if we don't wake up and rise to the challenge, you understand, this could go on quite a long time. Remember, you know, it was... Um, human life is precious. You know what I'm saying? Human life is precious, and our lives are precious too. You know what I'm saying? And we're just beginning to get to the consciousness where we're recognizing it, where we may not be Muslim or Mohammedan like, like the persecuted black people in Mali, but just the fact of the matter gets to make you recognize you can't keep silent to that if you truly have the spirit of the Mushiach. You know what I'm saying? If you truly have the spirit of Christ, in you, because truth is truth, and lies are lies, the falses are false. you understand, but notice how these people never can acknowledge the truth, they can never, you bring all the evidence to them, they can never acknowledge the truth, so we brought that forward, and the only thing he can talk about is some so-called real Arabs, even the fact how he introduced into it real Arabs, which means that whoever this person is, they recognize the difference between those Arabs of the countries that he named and ones like the Pakistanis and the Afghanis. Think about it. Those the Pakistanis and the Afghanis go over there. They go over there like servants in a sense, over, over that. It's only places like Egypt and some other places where they can, you know, especially in Africa, where they come in as scholars and so forth and so on, like that um, red henna face um, Pakistani, Paki, Afghani that we saw in the BBC report. But anyway... All he's talking about is so-called Arabs, so-called real Arabs from Syria, Iraq, Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, Yemen. He didn't say nothing about Sudan. Notice, he didn't say anything about Sudan. Why? Because the Sudanese, as well as the Somalians, you understand, are the real black Arabs of the time of Muhammad, the prophet Muhammad. 
and they all know it. It's a shame that the, you know, I don't know if the Sudanese remember remember that. I don't know about the Somalians, you know what I'm saying? But instead of turning their face in the right direction to reclaim their lands in Arabia, they are turning on their fellow, you know what I'm saying, dark-skinned black people who happen not to be in a, a, a perverted version or perversion of Islam, and we gave you the hadith from Muhammad. We gave you the very hadith from Muhammad, and Muhammad himself said in the latter days there will be 73 different sects of his people, of Muslims, and he said 72 of them will go straight to Jahannim, you know what I'm saying, to Jahannam, to go straight to Gehenna, or, or to the fire, you know what I'm saying, to, to hell, in other words. Muhammad says that, straight from the hadith, straight from the mouth of the hadith. And they say that's the sources we need to go to if we want to understand Islam. So those are the sources we went to, and that's what we understand. What will they say to this? Will they prevaricate? Most likely it's part of their nature. But we went on to say um, it is obvious that they value pale red Arab life more than black people. More than black people. So much so that he didn't name Somalia. He did not name um, um, Sudan. You, you, you know what I'm saying? You always where he named. You know what I'm saying? You always where he named, but he did not name any black people. So automatically you see that racial idea. You know what I'm saying? That seed idea is already in his heart and mind, as in so many of their hearts and their minds. It's not for us to try to change them. It's for us to recognize. You know what I'm saying? And recognize and act accordingly with the, with the reality of it. You know what I'm saying? It's to be mature about this. Now, the next point that we made was that the black people, that, that they honor and value pale red Arab life more than black people at home, in Africa, or anywhere else in the world. And we know this from Brooklyn. We know this from the ghetto. You know what I'm saying? We, I mean, we've got the corner store, Yemenis, and other kind of Harab and Hayrabs or whatever like that in our community. And we see sometimes how we've got to regulate them. You know what I'm saying? Everybody knows who, who is, who, who's in the ghetto and knows about these corner store Arabs a lot of time. You know what I'm saying? What they will do, and we, we get to know their nature. And if they do this over here, in the midst of the ghetto, then we can imagine what they do over there. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, they still enslave darker-skinned people and treat them as trash or second-class citizens of their caliphate, of their New World Order. The, the Arab Islamo-Fascist New World Order is called a caliphate. You understand? And they're trying to establish that even in Africa while we, while we speak. You understand? While we go about, you understand, making paper, they are stealing I and I land. They're stealing I and I land. And if you know anything from European education, Thomas Locke, the great economic, financial scholar. He said that land is the basis of wealth. Land is the foundation of wealth. If you're landless people like we are landless people, that's why we're so busted. You know what I'm saying? That's why we're so brock. You know what us? And those Negroes saying, I don't want to go to Africa. You understand? Well, you know, you, you, you over. So no thanks. No thanks. They can keep that out of Africa. They can keep that out of Africa. Now, um, we had a comment on, on more, that, that was more of a comment to um, Kose 20, but then we made a comment to Samuel um, 12321, but we had to ask, real Arabs? What do you mean by real Arabs? Well, we can tell by the countries that he named. By looking at the countries that he named and the type of populations there, well, it became obvious to us, at least, what he meant by real Arabs. You know what I'm saying? Seeing who he did not name. Mm-hmm. He didn't name, he didn't name Iran. And why wouldn't they name Iran? Because Iran, they may be Muslim, so even if they are the same religion, you know, because the Iranians were calling for unity regardless of Shia, Sunni, so forth, and so on. And those other guys said, nah, we don't want to unite with you. So it means they're still about their own seed or race. You have to understand that. They're about their seed. So, so one who thinks it's a religious thing, but I think the racial dynamic really has more of a hold in this Gentile world dominion. You know what I'm saying? It's like contagious in a sense. 
even as mad she says that, you know, we may get to the point in time where, you know, we will become intolerant too. You understand to to abuse, to degradation, to the trampling of our dignity and our human rights. You know, so real Arabs, what do you mean by real Arabs? Real Arabs, we replied, are the Sudanese. Real Arabs are the Somalians and others in black Africa. Those are the real Arabs. Zionist? Question mark. You've been watching a lot of videos, like a lot of these conspiracy videos out there. But, unfortunately, haven't done any homework or serious homework for Rastafari, once lost but now found the elect of the true and living God. Ethiopia is our Zion. And Ethiopia is the true Zion if you know what Zion means. And we mean Z-I-O-N in the King James Bible and not S-I-O-N. Some folks didn't even get that. We mean Z-I-O-N in the King James Bible version of the Bible and not S-I-O-N. There's a big, big difference, Yehovah's, and perhaps not in this vid, but hopefully in the next vid we'll get into that difference between the Z-I-N and the said iron You understand what is the, 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 the Z-I-N, Zion, and the said or S-I-N and Zion. There's a difference between Zion and Zion. Let's overstand that. Make a note of that. But for I and I, Ethiopia is Zion. Why? Because Zion, if you study the Bible, it was the castle of David. In other words, Zion was the castle of David. It was like the so-called palace. It was like Jubilee Palace. It was the seat of the Davidic monarchy. So Zion, based on principle and biblical hermeneutics, you understand, refers to the seat or the authority, you understand, of David's kingdom, of David's throne, and the greater David, Edomawi, Haile Selassie the first. That's what it refers to. You understand? Zion. He is the king of Zion, if you please. You understand? And the monarchy you understand the monarchy, the imperial monarchy of his majesty, that is Zion. Jubilee Palace, if you will, you understand, is Zion. Because it's the seat of the Davidic covenant. It's not the, see people talk about the mountain, no. If you read the Bible, it says that the palace, the castle of David, that is what Zion is. So understand Overstand that right when I get into the theological levels, you understand, which are very, very interesting concerning the Ark of the Covenant. That's also further proof. We want to focus on the throne of David and the Solomonic dynasty, you understand, and the restoration of the Ethiopian imperial monarchy. You understand? That is the key for we. The African Zion, well and way before. The Europeans converted to a form. You see, the Europeans, the so-called white Jews or European Jews, the Khazarians or the Ashkenazis or the, um, you know, you call them Edomite or, or Esau, you understand, before they converted, and they did convert, and we have it biblically, we have it historically, convert to a form of our ancient religion. They converted to a form of it. You understand? They did not take Judaism from us, according to the scripture. According to the scripture, the lost sheep or Israel was continually disobedient and turned their backs on Jah's covenant, on Jah's commandment, on Jah's law, on his statutes. And when Jah had had enough, he allowed the Gentiles, you understand, in the latter form of the Europeans, the earlier form, the Romans, 70 A.D., the latter form, the Europeans, to take this people on the final leg of that biblical prophecy. And here's where we're at today. So, besides the red henna-faced guy in the video that we posted up there, the red henna-faced guy who was having a black African being beat like in American slavery days, 
is from Pakistan or Afghanistan. So what are you talking about? You understand? And, and it's very clear even in the video. Mm -hmm. Now, with that being said, so there's some other questions that we want to take up a little bit later on. And um, who is this? This is uh, uh, Sor Sorelim, Sorelim, Sorelim. Um, you say, yeah, first. Aki, could you inbox me the, what is the, femi, the, the fe, femi female goddess? I don't know if you mean a piece or something like that or a pick. You said, Toda, Toda, Shalom. Well, Toda, Raba, you understand, um, to you too, Ak as well. Um, just clarify that right there for me and so I and I can get that info that info to the eye. You over saying get get more of that info to the eye that you asked that you asked about. One 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 final point. I w I don't want to leave Ag Azi eight, Agaza eight out of this because you made a comment and you said um um and we won't deny the faithful Muslims. The faithful Muslims. I'm, that's very, very good that you, you, you put it in that, in, that, in that wording, the faithful, you know, in the faithful, because we know, because remember where, where, where the faithful Muslims went was to Ethiopia, you know, saying? to Judeo-Christian Ethiopia, the very place of the throne of David, Ethiopia, for refuge. Look at that, for refuge. Of all the places, they went to Ethiopia, you know, saying? and there they were treated, you know, saying? with dignity. You know what I'm saying? So how dear they do what they do to I and I today, and how dear did they do what they did yesterday to I and I. But their prophet, Muhammad, peace be upon him, if you will, you know what I'm saying? He even said that there would be those, and he warned, this is the key thing, Mohammedans, your own prophet warned future generations of Mohammedan or Muslims or Muslims against going against the throne of David, going against that Solomonic dynasty of Ethiopia. You understand? Even in the Quran, the Quran was the 5 and 82, where you talk about the Gesesians, the Kesawia. You understand? Say, These people are humble. They are faithful. You understand? These are people of God. You understand? The very same ones who, who invited the Sahaba of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, into the country to begin with. So how dear did they do to His Majesty what they did in that hour? We have not forgotten, you know, saying about what they did during the creeping coup. They also conspired against His Imperial Majesty in that particular time, you know, saying lying on the Emperor and lying on Ethiopia. Even His Majesty in the speech, selected speeches, he, talk, he talks about false propaganda, that even in the latter part of the reign of His Majesty, a false propaganda was being circulated. You know, saying that somehow Ethiopia was not allowing Arabs and Mohammedans to come in and do business and, and get and so forth and so on. As a matter of fact, that's a lie. But that's interesting because that was a tell. That was a tell. You know, saying we see what's going on in the Western countries the same way too. You understand? Know Although some of their people are warring against the country, the other ones want to come in and get all the same rights as people who've been here for 400 plus years, but go through none of the same fight. You understand? Know we have to we have to be, be be aware of that. These are all tells. These are all signs. But here, brother um, Agaza eight, you said that the black Ethiopian Muslims, the Jaberti, Jabarti, Jaberti, I think they are known, but. The rest, dot, 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 amen, and amen, why can't the Huma agree among themselves? Why can't the Huma or the Uma agree among themselves? Even Louis Farrakhan exposed the racism within Islam itself. That's the point we tried to make before. You understand? That's the very point. One say, well, when um, Malik al-Hajj al-Shabazz or Malcolm X, when he went over there, you know, sent to Mecca. They treated him well. Well, of course, he was a celebrity. He was a star. They knew who he was. So, of course, you're going to give, you know, he was almost like a dignity, a, a dignitary. You know, so, of course, they were going to give him that sort of treatment. It's surprising that he, didn't, he, he wasn't awake and aware because something like a monophicon had gotten into his heart. You understand? But be that 
as it may, give thanks to Louis Farrakhan, who, as Agaza 8 says, um, he exposed the racism within Islam itself. And there's a whole heap of that, even in some of the Islamic literature. You understand that when you understand who um, Bilal was and how important Bilal was to, to, to the whole progression and manifestation of Islam. And he was, a, some say, an Ethiopian Jew, you understand, or Ethiopian Hebrew, you understand. And since Mohammed couldn't read, a lot of those who came with um, Bilal and others, because they knew the truth, because Ethiopia were the people of the book. They had those ancient texts and documents, which another Mohammedan, Somalian, Ahmed Grang, he destroyed enough of those, you understand, during the 1520s, um, 1530s in Ethiopia. And there was a whole slave trade that, 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 that took place at that time. That's why we count that 1530 date, you understand, which marked the end of Ahmed Grang. You understand? As an important time, because if you add 400 years to that, we have the very coronation date, or 1930. You understand? So, how we work out the dates, you understand, is important, but it's interesting when, when, when we have two or three witnesses, you understand, to each piece or part of this particular story. And then these ones want to say, well, what we're saying is not true, and they don't provide no information, no reasonable rebut. So, we can only say that they must be ignorant, they are liars or dissemblers, and beyond so much, we're, we're only going to reason with them, but so much because it's like a waste of time. You understand? Negotiating or compromising, which, you know, with those who really do not have I and I best interests. You understand? They don't look at I and I as equal because when they see I and I black face, you understand? Something is wrong. They don't have the grace of God. This is why I agree with some of them that what a lot of them need, they need Christ. They definitely need Christ because they're in a crisis and they keep messing with black Israel. They're going to get into a bigger crisis because who knows what the, you know, what the spark, you understand, might be. Who knows, you understand, the so-called straw that will break the camel's back after all. Hey, this is global, right? This is what we're doing. We're doing global. This is a global thing. No longer, say, it's, it's one world, right? Okay. Remember, all the kingdoms are Christ's kingdoms. Even Muhammad himself would tell you that if you were really reading the Quran properly. You understand? And people will say, he don't know what he's talking about. Well, they, they say the same thing. He don't know what he's talking about. You understand? He knows. And I and I know as well. And even though, um, speaking of Farrakhan, as Agaza 8 was speaking here, even though he has been quiet about his imperial majesty, Kadamawi Haile Selassie, Haile Selassie first, except for the one time, you know, one time, and then he says um, concerning I and I, when them Yadin is speaking truth, our wool, yes, Jah's word, the word of the King of Kings and His Christ, our Black Lord and Savior, Adunenu Yeshua HaMushiach, is the truth. Now, we respond at Miskana, Agaza 8. Everyone has a right to their own belief or opinion, as long as that does not deny us our human rights. To what? To life. To life. To liberty and to the pursuit of happiness, the pursuit of what makes I and I happy as long as we're not taking nothing away that rightly belongs to anybody else. You understand? Whoever these people who are invading Africa and our homelands are, they should be warned. You understand? This might just be a warning because it's not just I and I. We're, we're blowing the trumpet, but you don't see the army. You see, we're blowing the trumpet, but look, there's the army. We're blowing the trumpet, but look, there's other liars in wait. We're blowing the trumpet, but look, there's other archers. We're blowing the trumpet, you understand? And there's some brothers from other planets as well. You think it's a joke? You see, a lot of them think it's a joke, but watch. Watch. Stop bullying black Africans. Stop bullying I and I. You understand? They talk about bullying. These people are bullying I and I. You understand? With their racism 
and even with the Islamism. You know, it's like saying that we got to be their religion. How, how dare you? Uh, uh, are you serious? You understand? Do you know who Osiris is? Are you serious? You understand? Um, notice, they always blame the Zionists. And this is where I actually want to begin from that point, but want to share with you how we got to this particular point. Um, they always blame the Zionists. The Zionists are like the boogeyman. You understand? The Zionists, the Zionists. They blame the Zionists and never admit that true Zion, the throne of David, is in black African, it's in the black African nation that is called Ethiopia. They call it Al Habesha. But we're not Habeshas. Let those other careless Ethiopians be called Habesha. We're not Habesha. You understand? We're Ethiopia. You understand? We are Beta Israel, if you please. You know, so the blame game on Zion really needs to be dealt with. You know, in the blame game on Zion. So we're going to get into this in a little bit more detail. As we said, they said this heat wave so-called broke and everything, but it really does not, you know, it really does not feel like it. So we're going to hydrate and, um, you know, watch and pray and, Get forward with a little bit more, my brothers and sisters. So once again, toda raba. Um, um, thank you, Bet Ama Masaganalo, Amasaganachuhalo, um, for for viewing, so forth and so on. And share some of your comments and even your critiques. You understand? But you know, be um, be honorable. You understand? Be honorable. You know, was, you know, we we need to just keep that keep that honor amongst. I and I, you know, not not pretentious, but you always, you always know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? If you need to speak, you know what I'm saying? Just speak the truth. Don't we don't need the emotion? You know what I'm saying? We need the overstanding. We need the logos. We need the logic. We need the word because only Jah word is the truth. So shalom, Rastafari. Give thanks and praise to the King of Kings and His Christ Yeshua Hamoshia. Shalom.